Nicole Atkins for Pace Magazine with Christian from the Black Angels. Here. And uh, Christian played last night, and I saw a video of his set. 40,000 people. How was it? It's nuts. Unbelievable. It, Biggest crowd that I think we've ever played in front of. Yeah, just watching it on video made my stomach hurt. <laughs> I know. I didn't look up much to, out into the crowd. I tried to kind of keep to myself to stay in my mind. If I looked up, I would probably forget when I was going to play yeah. or what have you. How do you feel about doing interviews with no reverb on your mic? <laughs> Not a big fan. Any time that I'm talking dry, <laughs> there's a real... We could try to replicate it. I don't like it. So, 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 so. <laughs> the only way that I ever speak in front of people <laughs> is with reverb. So I hope that by the time that this comes out, that you put a reverb effect on my vocals. Because if it's not, then my voice just sounds real goofy. I saw you once walking through the streets of Austin with a mic and a little speaker. It's really what? weird. What? Yeah. When? Just, that's how you do it. You don't talk without uh, reverb. Randomly, uh, it just... <laughs> Walk down the street with a uh, Pathfinder guitar ramp, a guitar, a uh, microphone. I pretty much just play on the street corner in Austin. Um, I mean, there's a good spot at the corner of 6th and Chacon on the east side. You know, I can make $30 a day if I'm sitting there. Beer the money. And, you know, it's really prime. You know, you're, you're an artist as well. Um, no. You do like all the your album covers and stuff. Do you draw when you're on tour? Like, do you draw in the van? How do you pass time? Oh. How do the Black Angels pass the time in the van? All right. On long drives. Passing time? Yeah. Um, I read a lot of books. Um, on short little jaunts like we have right now, I usually don't bring my computer uh -huh. because I got my iPhone that can do what I need. Mini computer. Yeah. But. <laughs> You know, on my my uh, computer is my main means of uh, graphic design and uh -huh. stuff. But I mean, I find that really the the main design that I do is for the Black Angels because I guess that's what yeah. I'm most inspired by. And every now and then, other bands ask me to do design work for them. But if I'm not into what they're doing, then I'm just not even yeah. gonna have time to do it. Or do you ever like create like a drawing for somebody else and like it so much you want to keep it for your own band? Yeah, all it the sucks, time. It right? Well, I mean, it's it's cool because I do, anytime I'm inspired and I do a lot of design work, and then it, it turns out that, like, later on the, the Black Angels are putting out a 7-inch, and I can just go back into my back catalog yeah. and to a design that I already did, and that's it. That's cool. So, yeah. That's even like songwriting, you know? Yeah, you write exactly. a lyric, you don't use it for anything, and you just go back. Yeah, exactly. It. Yeah, hunter and a gatherer. Exactly. <laughs> there, ain't, there ain't nothing like, you know, graphic design's all good and stuff, but when you pick up a guitar, that's yeah. the most instant form of creativity that I've ever come upon. I went to school for art, and they were like, what are you going to do after this? I'm like, I'm going to start a band. And they were like, nice. wah, wah. <laughs> but, you know, they were like, make sure you draw your own posters. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know. I don't. My parents weren't very supportive of my um, starting the band. Really? Well, they help pay for my way through college. Yeah, and mine too. Advertising <laughs> and like get my master's in advertising, and then I don't end up doing anything in advertising. And they were a little. Did bit, they still tell you to use your degree, even though you guys are pretty huge right now? <laughs> well, I try to stress to them. I'm like, look, I use my degree to design all the Black Angel stuff, and all of the design elements. I wouldn't know how to do any of this if I didn't know how to go to school. So thank you for helping me to go yeah. to college because it was the path that led me into, into what music. I'm doing now. And I and also if I didn't, like the imagery of your that you make for your band is such a part of the music. It's just like Yeah, well I'm, I like to uh, I like for the um, imagery of like the album to somewhat reflect what uh, it's what gonna sound like when yeah. you pop it in the or lay down the LP on the record player. Yeah. Um, but it's cool though, like you know, you adopted this, you know, psychedelic kind of template yeah. for the artwork that goes with your music. That like now it's you know, kind of modernized. That like when you see like a design like this yeah. now, like my friends are like, oh, that's so Black Angels, you know. <laughs> and it's, you that's know, perfect. It's kind of reappropriating, yeah. you know. And you do the Austin Psych Fest too, so yeah. it's like. 
you're really like helping to keep a genre of music that's been around for so long exactly. and bring it, you know, into today, yeah. which is very admirable. Well, that's our goal to nice. like, I mean, the uh, 13 floor elevators are humongous inspiration. They're Austin now, as well. They're Austin. Yeah. They started the the, the uh, 13 floor, the, the psychedelic sounds of the 13 floor elevators was their first album. And they're yeah. the ones that coined the term psychedelic. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Hall was um, one of the members in 13 Floor Elevators. He went to University of Texas, and he was a uh, philosophy major. Uh -huh. And he studied a lot of uh, Aristotle and uh, these dudes, Socrates. Yeah. And Socrates? Yeah, yeah Socrates. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and he, um, at the same time, in the mid-60s, LSD was starting to become a, a, a thing that was coming out. And he thought that th that that was the way into the creativity yeah so all of the lyrics that the uh, the 13 floor elevators Tommy Hall was the main uh, songwriter he didn't know how to play any instruments mm -hmm. but he wrote he helped to write the lyrics and he created the electric jug yeah which was like this whiskey jug you know of like it's you know the old like 1800s like whiskey the jug jugs yeah. They look like, like growlers. Gray. Yeah. The yeah. growlers? Yeah. Dang. You know about those dudes? Oh, no, but the, the, I, I do know the growlers. We actually played They're with awesome. them. Yeah, we played with them in the Black Keys in LA. Man. But growlers is off, a bottle. But I'm telling you, everybody needs to check out the growlers. Yeah, the growlers those dudes are, so, are awesome. So sweet. But the 13 floor elevators, on the other hand, are very. Would you say that they're the, like the most influential band to you? I would say that um, my ulterior motive for getting my master's at University of Texas uh -huh. was to be able to move to Austin to start a rock and roll band with people. And the main reason for that was the 13 floor elevators. That music, Sgt. Pepper's was like the album that my dad bought it when he was like a teenager. There's some good songs on that album. <laughs> I listen to that thing over and over and over and over and over and just memorize the whole thing and envision myself as like being one of them. Doing it, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't, I tried when I was 12 years old to play the guitar. My dad had a right-handed guitar and... You lefty? Yeah. I knew it. And I couldn't really, it, my hand wasn't big enough to like wrap around it and I bought this book that taught you the chords and stuff. Yeah. And I, I couldn't figure it out with the right hand, so I just gave it up until uh, I was 20 and I was doing track and I broke wow. my ankle. So you're pretty new. Well, I've only been playing 10 years. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my... Good. I say you're only 22, you know, that's crazy. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, when I was 12, I picked the guitar up and <laughs> no, I'm now. But yeah, 30 so you now. broke your ankle and that's how you got into playing the guitar. Yeah. That's why. It was really uh, lucky that I broke my ankle. Yeah. Because <laughs> I wouldn't be where I am right now. Could have been a track star. Yeah. Thankfully, that I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm really glad you're not a track star. You yeah. make some of my favorite albums. It's really Dang great to see it. you. Dang Thank it. you. Good to talk to you. <laughs> Pleasure talking with you as well. Go get nice. Well. We're going to go get nice now. Will do. Bye.